Hi everyone, again, I'm Christine Dahl from Fashion Angel Warrior. Tonight's Facebook and Instagram Live will be what I wish I knew when I got started. These tips are going to help you 5X your business in 2018, so you definitely wanna tune in for this entire episode. Don't forget to share this video. If you do share it, I'm going to give you a little present. So type in shared in the comments on Instagram. You can't share it, so hop on over to Facebook inside our Fearless Fashionpreneur group and share it over there and I will give you a little gift. So please share it and I'll send you all the notes from today's episode, okay? Also, don't forget to give me your hearts up, give me your hearts, your thumbs up, give me your comments, I love it. I want to hear from you. I want this to be as interactive as possible. And as always, if you do have questions as we go along, definitely let me know. So I wanna start it off by asking all of you, how many of you have made bad decisions already in your business? Just be honest. I'm gonna be completely vulnerable with you guys tonight, so just be honest with me for one minute and just let me know if you have made any bad decisions or maybe just not so good decisions. They don't have to be bad necessarily, but if you've made any not so good decisions in your business so far or maybe just in life, right? Like sometimes you just make a bad decision, right? <laughs> I'm in the middle of contractor nightmare going on in my brand new condo and we literally hired the wrong contractors that did not really know what they were doing. And I now have to hire a brand new contractor to come in and fix everything that they did that was wrong. So that was a really bad decision. Um, Matthew says, no, not especially. I think a lot about it before acting. Okay, I'm not sure what that exactly means, but you'll let me know. Me, but not horrible. Okay, Danielle says, yes, miss you too, Nadine. Okay. So, I'm going to be really vulnerable with you guys for the next 30 minutes and share some of the most embarrassing things I've done in my business in hopes that you will not make these mistakes, that you will learn from these mistakes, and that you'll use these tips to skyrocket your business. And that's why I say these tips can literally help you 5X your business in 2018, okay? So here are the 13 things I wish I knew when I got started. I wish someone had told me all of these things. So number one, don't spend too much time or energy writing a formal business plan, okay? Somewhere along the way, we've all kind of been conditioned that in order to start a business or the first step in starting a business is to write a formal business plan. I remember taking this business plan writing course in college and that's everything we did for the entire semester was geared around this business plan writing thing. And I just feel like every time you talk about business, you hear everyone say business plan, business plan, business plan. And while yes, it's really important to have a business plan if you plan to get investors or you plan to apply for a bank loan or you're trying to get grants or some kind of scholarship or things like that, you will definitely need a formal business plan. But really in general, you really don't need a formal business plan to get started in business. And so that was a mistake that I made. So back, way back when, before I even started my fashion line Multi Chic, back in like 2011, I decided I was going to start a line of cocktail dresses that were using these repurposed vintage elements and details and things like this. And I decided that I was going to take my precious Saturdays, I worked really crazy hours in the industry and was working 16 hours a day, six days a week practically, so if I had a Saturday off, I was taking my precious Saturday time and I was going to spend it writing my business plan. And I literally, I remember going to my friend's office, my friend let me use his office in the city, um, just so that I could kind of get out of the house and not have to like go to Starbucks. And I literally went to his office like every Saturday for like a full day, eight hour day, every single Saturday for like four or five months straight. If you're having problems on Instagram, hop on over to Facebook. Sometimes the, the internet cuts in and out. So I literally did this for four or five months and then I was so burnt out at the end of writing the business plan that literally I did nothing with the business. Nothing, nothing. It literally fell to the wayside. So I really don't want you guys to burn out. I don't want you to feel the need that you have to write a formal business plan. I teach you how to do all of the things required to start your business in a really smart way and to know who your target customer is, to know who your competition is, all that kind of stuff. 
but not in a formal business plan setting. Hold on one second. People on Instagram are having issues. Go over to Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Don't know what's happening on Instagram. Sorry, guys. You'll have to go over to Facebook. Okay. So, I don't want you to get burnout, and I don't want you to have analysis paralysis, okay? Analysis paralysis is going to kill you, all right? I'm that type of person where I just need information, like I'm an information gatherer, right? But sometimes you spend so much time gathering information that you're not doing anything with the information that you're gathering, right? So it's not good. You need to take action. At the end of the day, it's way better to take action than to sit there collecting data and information, right? So when I started my actual real fashion line, the Multi Chic by Christine D'Angelo line, um, I literally did not have a business plan because I didn't need one. I wasn't going after investors, I wasn't seeking a bank loan or anything like that, and I really just had a desire and a passion to literally get my product complete and out there because I already had a buyer lined up. So that was kind of fuel to like light my butt on fire to get me going to make sure that I would get this line complete and not sit around gathering information, right? So whatever you have to do, light a fire under your butt and just do whatever it takes and don't be analysis paralysis or collecting data all the time. Actually take action, okay? Number two, the second thing I wish I knew when I first got started is don't try to do everything yourself. So you don't wanna really be all alone in business. You really need a support group. You need a network of like-minded people. And in the beginning of my business, I was like, I'm superwoman, I can do everything, I don't need anyone's help, I don't need to talk to anybody. And that's really not a good attitude to have. You really need to have a great community, which is why I created this amazing Fearless Fashion Printer Facebook group on Facebook. It's also why I include a private mastermind group inside of our Fashion Startup Intensive online course because I know the power of having a group of like-minded individuals that are all in the same boat, that can help you and encourage you and get you to where you need to be. And it's great to have that community to ask questions, to bounce ideas off of, all of that stuff. So don't try to do everything yourself, okay? Number three, this is a big one. Oh yeah, I definitely made this mistake. Get everything in writing. So I will first say that I've always been a big proponent of this in business, always. But sometimes we get a little too relaxed and we trust others too easily, and we really need to make sure that we can't let this happen, okay? You really need to get everything in writing from the beginning. So I'll share my experience. Long story short, I met this girl who is a Christian, and I'm a Christian, so I was like, all right, awesome, this is gonna be great, we can pray together, all this stuff. She offered to intern with me, and because she was a really good videographer, I asked her to do a video and shoot something for me and edit it, and she did a phenomenal job. So I was like, all right, you did a really great job. I'd love to actually hire you for another project. And so I hired her for another project, and it was actually a two-part project. She had to do filming of an event, and then later on we had to go back and do filming of just me. And I agreed to pay her. We talked about a price. We both agreed on the price. And I paid her and she did the first part and then it was actually my fault that I didn't follow up with her because I got really, really busy in my business. So I didn't follow up with her and do the second part right away. I waited a couple, a couple months to do the second part. Then I came back to her in the middle of all of that with a larger project and I said, here's a larger project I want you to film and I want to pay you, you know, tell me how much it's going to be. She's like, no, 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 I'll do it for free because I really want your help with a couple of things. Now, I told her I prefer to pay her because I don't believe in bartering your services. And this is another tip that you should take note of. I don't agree with bartering services and it's not something that I do in my business and I've ever done in my business. And it's because I think that by bartering your services, you're actually devaluing what you can provide and offer. You're basically saying, well, I'll do this for you if you do something for me. but that person might not really want what you have and you might not really want what they have and there's just a lot of things that go on with that when no money is actually exchanged and certain people can actually do less of a job by not taking any money from you, right? 
Okay, people on Instagram, I'm really sorry. You're going to have to go over to Facebook. <laughs> the sound is really bad. I hope you guys on, on Facebook can hear me okay. Go to Fearless Fashion Printer Group. Okay. Sorry, Instagram people. It's obviously not working tonight. Okay. So I told her right away, look, I'm not into bartering services. I just would prefer to pay you. She insisted that I do not pay her, which is very odd. And I really don't like it when people don't want to get paid. You should want to get paid. You're doing something that's required, requiring a lot of work and a lot of your time. Anyway, long story short, I was crunched on time. I was going crazy in my business at the time, so I agreed to it, and it was a disaster. It was a major disaster. After the event was over, we discussed what it was she, quote unquote, wanted my help with, and somehow her wanting my help turned into her wanting to partner with me in my business, and wanting to do all of my videos for me and get paid an astronomical amount to do it and that was not gonna fly with me um, I again declined her offer nicely and agreed to pay her for the work she had done already thus far and she still refused to, to allow me to pay her and it literally went all downhill from there long story short she never finished the other job that I actually already paid her for then it was a nightmare trying to get the footage from her and it was just a really bad situation and all of this could have been avoided if everything had been in writing. So please, please, whatever you do, get things in writing, okay? Number four, be consistent. So the beginning of my coaching business, I was not consistent at all, okay? I was literally, like I told you, working a crazy job. I was working 16 hour days, six days a week. So I would literally try to fit things in whenever I possibly could. I think I was doing blog posts like once every six months. I was doing YouTube videos like whenever I could fit them in. Like it was, there was no consistency in my business whatsoever. And I love this quote that my mentor says all the time, consistency separates the amateurs from the pros. And so you need to be consistent. Yes. You know what I'm talking about, Daniela. How many of you know you need to be consistent? Give me a yes if you know you've been slacking off a little bit on being consistent in the consistency department. I wanna hear from you guys. So most of you are all over on, on Facebook at this point in time. Denise, if you're having trouble hearing me, hop on over to Facebook and a Fearless Fashion Printer group. Lana says yes. Okay, I wanna hear from two more people. Lana Dean, yes. Okay, Gerard and Nikki Spear, yes. Okay, good, so we all know we need to be consistent, right? And you really need to be consistent with everything that you do. Your newsletters, your blog posts, your videos, Facebook Live, why do I do a Facebook Live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m.? At least I try every single Tuesday night. There are some exceptions when I cannot make it, but I try, try, try my hardest to never cancel this session because I want to be consistent, right? The key to being consistent, I'll give you guys a little trick here, is to not wait to the last minute. Try to plan ahead as much as possible. And one of the things that I do that helps me stay on track and be consistent is having an editorial calendar for my blogs and YouTube videos and then having a social media calendar that I share with all of my assistants so that I can stay on track for what's going on. Do we have a webinar coming up? Do we have Facebook Live coming up? Is there an event that we need to promote? Is there a fashion tour coming up? Like, what is going on and what are we promoting and what are we talking about, right? So stay organized, plan ahead, and be consistent, okay? Are you guys liking this information so far? Is it helping you? Give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up, let me know what's going on. Is it good? I wanna hear from you guys. Lots of areas to cover, yes, totally. Daniela, you're totally right. Okay, awesome, you guys are loving it. Okay. Number five, one of the things I wish I knew when I first started my business, is I wish I knew that you needed to create multiple streams of revenue from the beginning. Now, I always say you don't wanna to have too many streams of revenue because you'll drive yourself crazy, 
Two to three are usually good, I would say four maximum, right? And so in the beginning of my business, I really only had one way I was making money. As a coaching business, you make money coaching. You make money with one-on-one -on -one clients, right? So in the beginning of my business, that was the only way I was making money. And I quickly realized there's so many hours in the day and there's only one of me. So this is not going to be sustainable for very long. So I started to add things like online courses. Then I started to add different live workshops and fashion tours that we do. And then I also added affiliate marketing. So I actually have four ways right now that I get paid revenue that I make money in my business. And it's good to diversify and not have just everything, all of your eggs in like one basket as they say, right? So for all of you that are starting fashion lines, you might be wondering, well, how can I diversify? How can I have multiple streams of revenue with my fashion business? And so there's a couple of things you could do. You could wholesale other lines. You could teach workshops like how to sew or how to design something, right? How to sketch. You could become an influencer and build up your social media following so that people now pay you to talk about their brand. You could get paid to guest blog for other bloggers. You could get paid off your YouTube videos. There are so many different ways you can actually get paid when you really start to think about it. So for your homework, I want you guys, I'm giving you a little, little quiz here, little homework uh, assignment. I want you to think about two or three ways that you can get paid in your business besides selling your clothing line, okay? Start to think about that now. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Number six kind of ties into this. Figure out a way to duplicate yourself, okay? You can't do everything by yourself forever. Yes, in the beginning of your business, it's just you. You will be doing everything probably for the first one to two years, maybe three. But that's not really sustainable long term. And hopefully you're thinking about how your business is actually going to grow over time. So for me, that means things like creating online content because that's kind of a way to duplicate myself and also training up other coaches, which is something that I'm doing right now with a couple of my assistants. For you guys as designers, that means finding uh, someone that can be an assistant designer or training someone to be an assistant designer. And they could start out as an intern with you and then grow with you over time, right? So it doesn't have to be that you hire someone tomorrow, but start to think about who would you hire? Do you want to start working with someone that you can start training now and getting them ready to kind of take things over for you? Maybe you love doing the design, you don't really wanna hand that off, but you hate doing sales and you'd rather hand that off. So think about who you can train to be a sales rep or maybe hiring a sales rep, right? So think about ways that you can actually duplicate yourself so that you can really scale your business long term, okay? Number seven, this is a big one. You must focus on only one thing. For some entrepreneurs, I feel like for some reason, all entrepreneurs, we have this, this issue. I call it the shiny object issue, right? You see something blinging and you're like, ooh, I wanna do that. Ooh, let's go do that job. Oh, let's start a business over here. And we're always, we have so many, we're so creative, we have so many ideas in our head going on at once that we can't like just focus on one thing. Who agrees with me? Like you have trouble focusing on one business or one idea at a time, right? Who's with me? Like I know I'm not the only one. Like us creative entrepreneurs, like we're like, yeah, let's start a kid's clothing line. Then let's, we're like, let's add footwear, let's add jewelry, let's add women's, let's add men's. Like, and then all of a sudden you're not doing anything because you're trying to do everything, right? Juliet says, totally me. Daniela says, yep, okay. Gerard and Nikki, amen, okay. So we need to get out of this shiny object syndrome, okay? Now you know what it's called. It has a name, right? You can, you can address it by its name. And we can focus on one thing. So I'll give you a time in my life when I had this issue majorly. So I think this was back in like 2013. I had left my job, my full-time job. And somewhere in my head, I decided it would be a good idea to start three businesses yeah, not one, not two, but three businesses, pretty much all at the same time. So I literally was like a chicken running around without my head, right? Like it was ridiculous. So I wanted, always wanted to start, some of you may or may not know this about me, but I always wanted to start a cookie business because my grandmother taught me how to make these Italian biscottis and pizzelles and her recipe is amazing and no one makes biscotti the way she makes it and she taught me how to make it. And she was still alive at the time and I really had always wanted to do this 
almost like to honor her, right? So she was still alive and it was getting close to Christmas time and I was like, oh, now would be the perfect time to launch Grandma Rosie's is what I called it, my little cookie business. And I launched it and it was like amazing. I got so many orders for Christmas. It was unbelievable. It was like crazy. I was baking like 24 seven around the clock like a crazy person. I think I asked my husband who was my boyfriend at the time, like, please, you need to come over and help me bake cookies. And then I was wrapping them and packaging everything and shipping everything. I mean, it was just crazy. But it was great and I loved it, but I put so much time and energy into that business that it burnt me out, right? And then at the same time, it was kind of a seasonal business, so it didn't really make sense for me to continue it, even though I tried. I tried to continue it for Valentine's Day and Easter and whatever, but it wasn't really working. It was really only a seasonal business. But at the same time, I was also continuing with my coaching business, Fashion Angel Warrior, and I was also launching my multi-chic fashion line. So I literally was going crazy. And I always say, Starting a business is like launching a rocket, okay? 95% of your energy is going to be burned in the launch, right? In the beginning phase. The beginning phase is the hardest. It's the most amount of work because you have no systems in place. You've never done this before. You have no idea what you're doing. And so it's going to take a lot of your energy to get started. Now, I was very passionate about all three things, but honestly, after nine months of trying to run three businesses, I was completely, utterly, like disgustingly burnt out. So please, please do not make this mistake. Focus on one thing, master it, have your systems in place, and if the business can get to the point where it's running without you, then you're allowed to start another business. Otherwise, you are not allowed to start another business, okay? Make me that promise, everyone's gonna promise me. You are not gonna start another business until your current business is running without you, okay? Everyone, please make that promise. Okay, number eight. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because we're running out of time. Oh, this is a huge one, okay. Learning how to say no. As my mentor says, we need to get on the no train, okay? Lana Dean promises, awesome. We need to get on the no train especially us ladies, because for some reason, women, we like to please everyone, we put ourselves last, we're like the mothers, we're taking care of our children, we're taking care of our husbands, we're taking care of people at church, we're doing everything for everyone else and then we never do anything for ourselves and then we wonder why we're so burnt out and we have all these gray hairs, right? So, you need to say no to opportunities that are not really beneficial for you or for your business. And I want you to think right now of something that you might be saying yes to in your business right now that's currently happening in your situation, in your life, that you probably should be saying no, okay? We need to start saying no way more than we say yes. And I'm gonna give you a really good example. So, like I mentioned before, back in 2011, when I first decided I was going to, to start my own fashion line and kind of branch out on my own, it kind of all stemmed from meeting this woman at the gym. I literally met this woman at the gym in the locker room and she started telling me that she's a stylist and a fashion designer and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And that she styles this woman, this high socialite woman for New York Fashion Week and she's gotta go and find something to wear. And my ears perked up real high and I was like, oh my gosh, if I could get something of mine on this woman and her social light client friend, whoever it was, it would be great, it would be awesome. So I immediately told her, oh, well I'm a fashion designer and I have my own line. I literally just like made this up. Like I had no line, I had nothing, right? I had an idea, but I had physically no samples, I had nothing. And she's like, oh, that would be so great. Meanwhile, Fashion Week was about one week away. Okay, this was in February of like 2011, I think, or 2010, I think it was 2011. And this was like before Instagram and all this stuff, but she said that her friend, her socialite friend, who's interviewed all these celebrities and all these people, would interview me as the designer of her outfit and her friend's outfit at New York Fashion Week. And I was already going to New York Fashion Week because I worked backstage at the time at a lot of the shows. And so I thought it was perfect. I was like, this is it. This is how I'm gonna get started. It's gonna bring me so much fame and press and like all this stuff. 
Meanwhile, I agreed to do this without actually even researching who this woman is or who her socialite friend was. Needless to say, I spent so much time and energy whipping together two samples for them both to wear literally a week later to then have this interview which was videoed and I think it was up on YouTube although I think I took it down now it's not on YouTube anymore and it literally got me nothing literally nothing because I didn't have a website I didn't have I didn't have anything it was just stupid my ego totally got in the way and I just wanted to do to do this because I thought it would be like lead to fame and all this stuff right like how many of us have ever let our ego get in the way be honest I'm being completely vulnerable with you guys right now how many of you have let your ego get in the way and you've done something in your business that you know would not actually lead to something and you regretted it later let me get a heck yeah let me get an amen <laughs> let me get oh yes I know I'm not the only one. Please let me be not the only one. I know there's at least a, a few of you on still with me. I know on Instagram it's not really going that great. Sorry about the sound on Instagram, guys. Um, so, yes, of course. So, we really need to start to say no, okay? Every yes that you say means you're actually saying no to something else because we only have so much time in the day. And so if you're spending your time doing one thing, it's taking you away from doing something else that could really be what you need to be doing in your business to really push your business forward. And you don't wanna be wasting your precious time. And if you want more inspiration on time and what your time is worth, check out our Facebook Live episode number 26 called What Your Time Is Worth, Time Versus Money because that was a really, really good one. And it also shows maturity when you can say no to something, when you know deep down that this isn't the right decision for you to make, it's not the right thing for you to do in your business, right? And understand also that a lot of the time, what's really behind saying yes all the time is FOMO. If you've never heard of FOMO, it stands for fear of missing out, right? We're scared that we're gonna miss out on an opportunity. Why did I work my butt off for a week to get these two samples ready to then do this interview at New York Fashion Week? Because I had a fear of missing out, a fear that if I didn't do this, it was, I would miss my big break. I would miss you know, everything I've always dreamed of having my own fashion line and all of this stuff, right? So we need to start to learn how to make decisions and judge something and judge whether something is actually a good opportunity or not for our business. And you really need a system in place in order to do that. And if you wanna know more about systems, check out our Facebook Live episode 32, why you need a system, okay? So definitely, definitely try to start saying no more to things than yes. Get on the no train, as my mentor always says. Okay, number nine, you need to have boundaries. Ooh, this is a big one. We don't like to talk about this. So when I work with a client one-on-one, -on -one, I have a list of boundaries that I include in my welcome email to them because I know, because I've been burned before, <laughs> that I need to have boundaries. And in this list is things like how often you should email me and how many... Can you, can you and can you not text me and all of that sort of thing, right? And I do this because I made a really, really big mistake one time with a client who totally overstepped her boundaries, like way, way far overstepped her boundaries to the point where I literally fired the client because she wouldn't listen and abide my, my boundaries. And so going forward, I state my boundaries up front from the very beginning so that everyone is on the same page. So this goes the same for working with buyers. Buyers are going to come to you and they're gonna to wanna to start changing everything around. They're gonna say, oh, I love that top, but can we make a short sleeve? And can I actually put it in a stripe instead of a solid? And do you have like a floral print? And let's add a bow over here. And they're gonna start making all these crazy, crazy requests. And you need to decide early on in your business whether you're going to bend over backwards to accommodate every single buyer, because trust me, it is not worth it in the end. Sometimes you will bend over backwards so far and you'll jump through all these hoops just to please a buyer that it's not actually going to be beneficial for you in the end. When I worked in the industry, we had so many times where these buyers would make these crazy requests. And by the time I thought about how much energy and time and fabric and all this stuff we had to reorder and cancel and go through just to get these buyers what they wanted. It's like, are you even making any money at the end of the day? Like, you need to make money in your business. And so it's not always about pleasing every buyer and you really wanna make sure that you don't get burned in the end. 
Lanadine says, I was close, but when I heard the price for the Miami Swim Show, I backed down. Too many shows don't benefit my brand because I've been burnt before. Yes, Lana Dean, that's a good one. That's a really good point. Trade shows are super, super expensive and it might not be worth it for you. If you don't have any sales, if you haven't been selling in any, in any uh, stores yet, if you don't have good relationships with the buyers, you might spend all this money to have a booth and have literally everyone walk by your booth and no one come in. So you really need to have a strategy. You really need to make sure you're doing the right trade show and that it's the right time for your in your business for you to do a trade show. And I teach all of that in our successful sales secret course. So if you're interested in learning how to do a trade show, how to prep for a trade show, what to do during the trade show, what to do after the trade show, how to really attract buyers into your booth, what kind of marketing you should be doing, all of that stuff, we talk about that in the successful sales secret course. I'll put a link on Facebook for you guys, okay? All right, number 10. You need to figure out the best tools to use as fast as possible, okay? I'll share a time with you. When I first started in my business, I was using eye contact for my email marketing. And really the reason I was using it was because it was actually included in the price of my website hosting package that I was paying for. And honestly, I do not recommend eye contact. It is very outdated. And at the time, I didn't realize how outdated and how difficult it was to really put together a newsletter. For me to draft a newsletter in eye contact, it was taking me like four hours to draft an email, to draft a newsletter. And part of the reason was because I had a lot of pictures and the way that they have you upload pictures, you have to resize them because they don't fit and all of this stuff. And I was sitting there and I was like wondering, thinking to myself, there's got to be a better way. Has anyone ever thought that? Like, have you ever done something in your business and you're like, there's got to be a better way. This is taking way too long. How is everyone else doing this? Why can't I figure this out? Like, what is going on? Like, has anyone ever been there besides me? I'm sure you probably all have. Um, it was just taking me way too long. And that's why it's really important to have a coach or a mentor or someone that you can talk to or a support group that you can really ask and they can really show you the right tools to use and the right the right way to go right so eventually my coach recommended to me like hey why are you using eye contact why don't you just use mailchimp it's free up to 1500 contacts i believe and now it takes me 15 to 30 minutes to do a newsletter okay that's a huge chunk of time that i'm saving in my business okay so you really want to figure out the right tools to use from the beginning so that you can be on the right track and save a lot of time and really use that precious time for more important things, okay? And a coach can help you do that. Number 11, this is one you're all not gonna like. You need to focus on building your email list. I say this over and over again, and those of you who know me, I drill it in your heads because I know that it works. In the beginning of my business, I had only like 500 contacts on my email list for the longest time and it was painful because my business wasn't growing that fast. It wasn't until I hit like around 1500 emails on my contact list that things really started to shift in my business. And believe it or not, email marketing is still 40 times as effective, 40, four zero times as effective as social media, okay? The nice thing about email marketing is once you have your their email, you basically own them. You don't own your followers on Facebook or your followers on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook do, and actually they're the same company. They're both owned by Facebook. So they can shut down your page at any time and you will lose all of your followers. So please, please, if you haven't started email marketing, start it right away, do MailChimp, it's free, and start building your email list now. And we can help you do it. It's one of the things I focus on with all of my clients building an email list. Okay, we're running out of time. Number 12, get a coach sooner rather than later and take more risk. This is something I really wish I would have done in my business sooner rather than later. I have a coach now, but I didn't have a coach in the beginning. And you really want to have a business coach or a fashion coach or 
someone that's going to help you with the things that you need help with in your business. You are your biggest asset. The more you're learning, the faster your business is going to grow. And I also would have invested in more programs. I spent a lot of money and a lot of time investing in programs, but I've always, always, always made back way more than I've ever spent as a return on investment in any program I've ever uh, taken a part of and invested in. So I would have taken way more risks. I would have worked with a coach way sooner and I would have invested way more in, in coaching programs and, and courses and things. And if you're interested in learning about the real reason why you're not investing or what's behind not investing, listen to Facebook Live episode number 36 where we talk about the real reason you're not investing in your business and what it means for your success, okay? And last but not least, drum roll number 13, what I wish I knew before I got started is to be original. Really, honestly guys, God created you all individually, unique, different for a reason. Don't try to copy what someone else is doing. You know, I think in the beginning I was so nervous about doing things wrong that I just looked to what others, others were doing and tried to really copy. And instead now, I just look at what others are doing as a form of inspiration, but I turn it around and change it into what is, is, what is me. Like, I make it mine, I make it my own. I, I put my own personality and my own spin to it, right? When I do these Facebook Live dances and all these different things, right? Like, that's just me. I like to dance, I like to have fun. I don't care that I look like an idiot. I don't care if I can't dance that well, whatever. Like, this is me, this is the real me. You're gonna get it all and I'm not gonna copy anyone. So please, please, please be original. Don't copy anyone, just be yourself. You will thank me later. So I hope you all got a lot out of today's Facebook Live. What I wish I knew before I got started. Take these 13 tips, I promise you, they will help you to 5X your business in 2018 if you really take them all seriously. Don't forget to share this video. If you type shared in the comments, I will send you all of the notes from today so you have all of those 13 things listed out and you can refer to them. You can put them up on your vision board. You can put them on your wall. Look at them every day and know what you're doing next, okay? A couple of announcements. Our doors are closing tomorrow for our fashion startup intensive. The next one does not start until September. So if you've been on the fence about doing the FSI course, definitely get off the fence, get in. There's only one spot left. I put a link in the bio. So you definitely don't wanna miss out. The next one is not until September and I might change a lot of things about the course by September. So it might be better now than it is later, okay? I'm just letting you know, we might take away some things. So definitely take advantage of the FSI. Number two, our tour for March is completely sold out, so if you're interested in attending our famous Fashion District Manufacturing Tour, you can attend the one on April 19th, and there is still early bird spots left. So definitely take advantage of that. I put the link for that. And we've hired a project manager, guys. So if you need help with fabric sourcing, CADs, tech packs, cost sheets, um, even making a list of store buyers, like she can do all of that stuff for you. So if you're interested, email us and we'll put you in touch with our project manager who can literally start taking a lot of things off your plate. Yes, Matthew says the FSI is great. He's loving it. He's in the course right now. Matthew is doing an awesome job. He has a beautiful, beautiful line. You should all go check it out. And that's it. Oh, next week we will do a Facebook Live topic of Q&A. So if you have any questions, definitely start typing them in on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag AskFo, ask F-A-W, and I will answer them next week on our Facebook Live. Yes, Lana Dean plans to take advantage of the course. Don't wait too long, Lana Dean. Things will be changing by September. Okay, I love you guys. And if you're in the FSI group, stay tuned at 8 p.m. tonight. We're gonna do our Q&A that we always do inside of our private mastermind FSI Facebook group. All right, guys, love you. Have a great night. Bye.